Hello again, and thanks for joining us. Once again, this is the Catholic View for Women, of course, our show for women and others. It's a show with news and views from a truly Catholic perspective. And very excited about this program because we are going to be talking about women speaking for themselves. In particular, fo focusing on a website that was developed after all the controversy of the HHS mandate. And it was a wonderful group of women from across the country, very diverse. Actually, it was the idea of law expert mm -hmm. and speaker and pro-life activist Helen Alvary. That's right. And put together this website and thousands of women, including all of us, yes. have signed, signed the petition signed and the petition. we signed on to the website. And it is about women speaking the truth from their hearts about the faith, Catholic and other Christian women mm -hmm. who are saying, you know what, federal government, this particular group, Planned Parenthood, you don't speak for me, or Sandra Fluke or Flock, right. whatever the name, her, I think it's, I Fluck. forget how it's mm -hmm. pronounced, but she claimed to speak for so many women and right. so many Catholic women, and so it was very frustrating, and we decided to do a show on this about women who truly speak for themselves. And that reminds me of like why I founded the Silent No More Awareness campaign, it was the same thing happening with women who had abortions, right? The feminist groups was claiming to speak for all these women, you know, mm -hmm. about abortion, how liberating it was. And then so we said, no, you have to listen to the women who've actually had the abortions. And so in this, women speak for themselves. This is going right against all the nonsense that out there yes. about the pill, you know, and with the HHS mandate, you know, insisting yeah. that we give abortion and contraception and, and uh, it's just absolutely horrible. And yes. I know, you know, Priest for Life, just like uh, EWTN, we were the first groups to launch uh, the website against this mandate. And uh, we're going to continue the fight. You we have, have a lawsuit as well. Yes, we you? do. Yeah. yeah. And we'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court. You know, at this taping right now, it's still in pro process. Mm -hmm. But we'll go all the way if we have to because uh, we just cannot just sit back and go, oh, what are we going to do? You've got to fight exactly. injustice. This is an injustice mm -hmm. against our Catholic But let's beliefs. talk about what it is, though, because there's a lot yes. of confusion still. They don't know what Even it is. when this first broke, I was talking about it day after day after day on my show, HHS mandate, HHS stands for Health and Human Services. It's a mandate from the federal government requiring even churches and religious institutions to provide in their health care plans right. for Ab birth control, abortion patients, and, and other things that right. go against um, their conscience and also yeah. against, in our case, Catholic teaching. And see, uh, up until this mandate was put out there, Priest for Life, our medical insurance for our staff uh, specifically did not have coverage for those things. And the females on our staff are fine with that. They don't want it. <laughs> they don't, you know, they're, they're Christians or Catholics, and they're saying, absolutely, matter of fact, we released a, a video up on YouTube of the, all the women surrounded by Father Pavone when the, they first hit us with the mm -hmm. mandate and say, we will not obey it. We are the women. We do not want this. We don't want our government telling the group that we, our employer, what they have to mm -hmm. do. This is ridiculous. Exactly. And that's what people don't realize. This is the government interfering with conscience of people. Our it, fundamental uh, right to practice our, our religion. That's right. Freedom of religion is at stake Absolutely. with this HHS mandate. And the USCCB took a very strong stand, mm -hmm. and they, uh, of course, had the fortnight for freedom. They're, right. They did it again this summer, and they have a, actually a section on their website at usccb.org dedicated to this whole issue of religious freedom and, and many of the bishops speaking out regularly. I remember interviewing my archbishop in the Archdiocese of Detroit, Alan Vigneron, and he's such a calm, peaceful man. I think that was the first time I heard real righteous, not that he isn't righteous, righteously angry about other things, but on the air, He's always very composed. He always calms me down when we do interviews because I'm always, you know, all over the place. But, <laughs> but he was so fired up. And, and I said, you know, your, your grace, what will happen? He said, I'm not even, I'm paraphrasing, I'm not even going there. We will not succumb to this. That's right. you know, we will not go against Catholic teaching. But it's very frightening because the way it's been presented by the media and mm -hmm. by the government is that, oh, well, there are exceptions. But the exceptions don't is affect yeah. the Catholic Church because what happens is, is the only way you can qualify for that exemption or exception is if you only serve people of your own faith. And so the Catholic Church doesn't ask we for your Catholic everyone. ID card when you no. walk into a Catholic <laughs> pregnancy Absolutely. center, when no. you walk into a hospital, when you walk into a soup kitchen. Right. So this is the problem, but so many people don't know. Right. And now, I don't know how many, it's been two years already or a year and a half since this has been introduced. It's important for us to speak for ourselves. And I'm sorry, but I don't know how you ladies feel, but Sandra Flock doesn't speak for me. No, she doesn't speak for me either. And I think it's outrageous that, you know, here she is, uh, a Georgetown law student, you know, uh, spending all this money on tuition, right, that she has, and also with her Starbucks coffee in her hand and says, I need the government to pay for my $10 a month Where birth Where was she pills, before the you know? HHS mandate? We didn't hear from her. Not, not the, the whole thing was, it made me so she angry. She was a poster child It was for so them. staged. All yes. of a sudden, buying contracts 
contraception is this huge concern. When right. everybody was going about yeah. their business, not that we're agreeing with it, prior to this mandate. It, it isn't about right. that. It's about imposing contraception exactly. it's about and control. the mentality right. Right. and control. the power that Planned Parenthood has. Because there's has. enough free contraception already out there under Title X funding through Planned mm -hmm. Parenthood. In other words, there's plenty of free birth control pills out there on the, on yes. the market. This is this is going beyond. This is ridiculous. It yeah. really is. But what a great opportunity to, to teach people about contraception, right. why the church right. is against it. Even to people who are not Catholic, why are you so opposed to it? What is the big deal? You know, come out of the dark ages. Let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. And to bring out the testimonies of the people who are women speak for themselves, to talk about the truth about why we stand against contraception and for authentic um, health and marriage and love, this is such a great opportunity that right. we have had. And actually that's what we did. We went and talked to two um, women who were actually experts on the topic, one of whom we've had on the program before, uh, talking about um, her own reversion from that's contraception right. into NFP right. and she now teaches it. Mm -hmm. And then we also spoke with uh, Chelsea, who's one of her coworkers at um, Good Girl Comeback. And so they're all about turning your lives around. Now we have to go into the break, so we'll play them after, along with a really cool song from an EWTM partner, Annie Carto, who's a wonderful Catholic singer and songwriter who's a regular on mm -hmm. my show, who wrote this really cool song called Let Freedom Sing. And it's all about women speaking for themselves. So we'll have those clips some after the break. But I think it's really important for women to know that That's there right. are other voices out there and that they don't have to feel like they are represented by the Sandra Flux or the Planned Parenthood or the NARAL right. pro-choice Americas out there. And, and I don't know how many women really know that though. Right. You know what I mean? And also, too, you know, when people say, well, how do we fight against all this? We have to start with prayer, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to look to our saint for this episode, which is St. Teresa of Avila. Yay, love her. <laughs> and her favorite. feast day, of course, I was is named after her. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. October 15th. That's right. Okay. And she was a virgin and also a doctor of the church. She was born in Avila in 1515. She was educated by Augustinian nuns. All right. Uh, when she was 20, she entered the Carmelite convent of her native city. Her writings tell of her mystical experiences and visions, and she reformed the Carmelite order, and she died in 1582. And she was ma named a doctor of the church in 1970 by Pope Paul VI, and she was the first woman uh, so honored as a doctor That's of the right, church. That's right, first doctor of the church, and she's certainly someone who spoke for herself, and especially on behalf of, of the church right, and other the women truth. of God. Right. Let's yeah. take a break, and we come back, we'll hear from some other godly women who are speaking up for themselves and saying, you know what, Planned Parenthood? You don't speak for choice us. folks, right. you don't speak That's for me. Right. That's right, we'll right. ignore me. <laughs> Welcome back and thanks for watching The Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio along with my co-host Astrid Bennett Gutierrez from Los Angeles Pregnancy Services and Hispanics for Life and of course the well-known Janet Morana from Priests for Life, the Defending Life show here on EWTN and the Silent No More Awareness Campaign. And Boy, that first segment go by fast. Very it's passionate right. about this so topic, to Women say. Speak for Themselves. And there's actually a website, mm -hmm. womenspeakforthemselves.com. We really want to encourage you, and we'll do it again at the end of the show, to go to that website and sign on to this. It's a very good ministry that was started right after the HHS mandate was announced. So I want to get to our clip. Right. Because I, we took the time to talk to two young women who have a wonderful ministry called Good Girl Comeback. And they're taking a look at this issue and why it is important not only for us and for them, but for all of us to speak out and to not let anybody else speak for us. Let's take a listen. It was all a snowball effect. So right after high school, I did a year of volunteer work. And after I finished, people would just ask me to come to their youth group or their Girl Scout meeting or even just youth girls at home and just to share my story of, story of volunteer work. That's kind of what sparked the, the um, interest, but then also my story of having a purity ring and being very proud of that and being very vocal about that and um, doing that from eighth grade on. And even being at a large public school and sharing that story, I was still on homecoming court every year. And homecoming queen my senior year, the girl that didn't party and wanted to save herself for marriage. So it was just such a counter-cultural message that it sparked a lot of people in the community's interest. And so it started that way. People would say, come on over and talk to my girls or talk at my youth group. And 
after a while, people would say, you know, what's your next thing? Can I go to your next thing? And I'm like, I don't have a next thing. Maybe I should think of a next thing. And that's kind of how it all started, just putting what I was doing organically into a program. At a young age, my parents talked to me about the beauty of sex and the beauty of saving that for a married relationship. And um, after reading a few books and going to a few talks, I brought it up to my parents and said, you know, this promise ring is something that I think I, I want to do and I want to commit to. And after the fact, after I had gotten married, my mom told me that that scared her a little bit, that she was nervous about me making such a big commitment at 13 years old when I did. But she never voiced that and I thanked her for that because I was committed to it and I was happy that they both had encouraged me and my dad especially was the one that encouraged me um, the most in this, in this situation verbally but also just in his action by taking me out on dates and talking to me about what I should look for in a man and loving me so I wasn't looking for that love from other men. I found it first in my father and in my relationship with God. So that's sort of what grounded me and started me down that path and you know it just I explained at the Good Girl Comeback that my purity ring just wasn't about not having sex. It also affected every decision that I made. So I knew that if I drank too much, I could potentially put myself in a situation that I would regret. And all those years of trying to save myself for marriage could be gone in a moment of being drunk or, you know, just deciding to date the wrong guy that pressures me into doing something that I didn't want to do. So it wasn't just about not having sex, but it was a full, a full commitment of purity in every way of your life and looking at all the things that could hurt or influence that. I do share with them though too is I did make mistakes along the way and, you know, had setbacks and how I overcame them as well. So it's not like I'm standing up there saying, you know, be perfect and I'm perfect, but sharing the whole full picture, but, you know, just encouraging them to go down that path. You're going to fall, you're going to make mistakes, but as long as you stand that general path, the good girl path is what I call it, of making those commitments and doing your best to work towards them and reach them. Um, I mean, they're 25 steps ahead, a lot of other girls out there right now. I offer multiple seminars throughout the year. Same exact seminar, just a lot of different dates because we all know how everyone's calendars are so crazy these days. So I wanted to offer it as many times as possible so girls could attend. And then each school year, I come out with a new program. So the goal is that every year they come once, twice, three times to the same program, and then they come every single year hearing new information. Well, primarily that the war on women started long ago with, you know, Planned Parent, Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood. That was the real war on women um, because in the guise of women's health and reproductive rights, they're really causing women to be more uh, used um, for pleasure only and as an object to be discarded and the consequences that go with it then are also discarded, the babies and, and all the abortions um, that are taking place with contraception, you know, with the pill, with the, um, the morning after pill now, which is more, um, you know, soda in New York is more regulated than the morning after pill. I mean, so the real war on women began back then. So it really is infuriating that as um, that we can't maintain that the government is trying to take that right away from us to stand for something for women. And yet, you know, they're saying, oh, no, you can't make a stand against that because we're the ones who dictate um, this policy. It's just, it's infuriating. Well, the first thing that, that needs to be addressed is that the church um, is often perceived as being negative about sex. 
that um, and prudish and um, that they don't want you to have sex as a married couple. So I tried to be very open that in fact the church is the only one who regards sex so highly that they try to protect it within the, the safe place that is a marriage of between one man and one woman. Um, and um, you know, so breaking down that barrier, getting people to see that no, the church think sex is a tremendous gift and they're the only ones that are protecting it um, so much so that they want you to do it with only one person. Um, so once people, pl once I plant that seed that, you know, the church isn't down on sex, um, then we can talk about um, then how to properly use that in marriage. And the first uh, barrier that always comes up is, well, abstinence. Abstinence is um, where I, I can't allow myself to have the pleasure of sex anytime I want it. Um, where they don't, what I try to show them is the gift of abstinence, which is um, when you are able to control yourself, uh, there's a gift in, in, in that self-control, but also how it refreshes a marriage to have times of abstinence and a honeymoon phase every every month essentially. So women who feel like I am uh, I'm being I'm only being used for my body in NFP, there's a time every month where the the couple has to find other ways to show each other they love each other besides sex. And by the way, you can also tell a lot about a man if he's willing to um, practice abstinence both before marriage and during it. It shows what kind of self-control he has. Um, so again, in terms of protecting women, you know, to pick a good husband, this is a great tool. Chastity is a great tool before marriage, abstinence um, uh, before marriage, because you can see how much he really respects you. And that ties right into the good girl comeback message of, you know, having a strong faith and, and being a good girl um, and waiting until marriage, until you have sex. And that helps you pick out a better man. And so to me, one of the things about the Good Girl Comeback is it's helping to ultimately plant seeds to build stronger marriages. It's so important that we help our young women know the truth because one of the places where we're seeing all of this play, played out is in the universities, like the Sandra Fluck situation. It's Georgetown University. So, you know, the vision for universities, like, St. Ignatius of Loyola, who founded the Jesuits, mm -hmm. he wrote in his constitutions that it was so important that universities be a place where uh, not only were the uh, students taught letters, but also moral development. So are we offering our young women moral development? So it's so important, I think, for our young women to know about authentic college, uh, Catholic colleges, go there so that they can get a good formation and be authentic leaders. because. One thing that I see in the Hispanic community is uh, some, of the, some of these colleges where our Hispanic Catholic women go, sometimes we see uh, leaders that are Hispanic Catholic women that aren't really uh, Catholic. practicing Catholic. Right. They not are Catholic. for abortion. They do right. not represent us. And yet they say that they are Catholic. They say their grandmother prayed the rosary, but they are not really representing us. So, and young women think that to, to succeed, they have to betray their faith, or maybe they don't even know what their faith teaches. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, uh, an area that I think is important to promote authentic uh, universities that teach uh, authentic Catholicism. And those four years can be a place where the young women will be surrounded by like-minded people and also learn how to think. Because to speak for ourselves, we have to learn how to think how to evaluate information. How to connect the dots. That's yeah. right. That's coming I mean, at just us. look at all the, the Catholic women politicians who yes. actually pushed Obamacare and HHS mandate. Well, Sibelius right? and Pelosi. Oh, Pelosi, <laughs> right. And yeah. now, they, you know, they, they label themselves Catholic, but are they practicing Catholic? They're not. I mean, when was the last time they went into a church other than like being right before election where the cameras are all on them and the whole debate happens? You know, but they're but, against but fundamental teachings. But they're against teachings. the teachings of the church. And so therefore we have to really, we have to wake up and pay attention to really what's going on out here. And, and you know, and, and the whole contraception thing and the HH mandate has really gotten just watered down. And, and like you said, Teresa, the media is basically ignoring the well, story. Well, it, they ignored it and they didn't really do anything about it until Cardinal Dolan and others, I mean, really. Spoke 
spoke up. Spoke right. up and, mm -hmm. and the bishops, they finally started reporting it because the bishops right. really were very bold. And they're bold. making it look like the church is trying right. to keep right. we're, we're trying to, we're trying to suppress yeah. and suppress. oppress. No, and yada, we, yada, just, yada, we just yada. don't want to pay for contraception. Yeah. Don't force Catholic schools, Catholic organizations, the Catholic church to pay for contraception because it's against their beliefs. That's all. That's all this is about. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't get birth control pills out right. there. Right. They're readily available. And like we said before, under Title X and Planned Parenthood for free. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's, it's crazy. And women are dying from these pills. That's women right. are getting cancer. Women are, are getting blood clots and I mean, all these horrible things. And we, we know it's an abortive patient. So it's clear why we are against it. You know, so many women are, are so know. healthy. Healthy and they and they eat and they exercise and they watch right. their weight, but then they take in something like the birth control which pill, is which is like, loaded with with uh, and all and it's types like taking of, a female steroid. Right. And I go it's, into this in depth yeah. in my book, my new book, Recall yes. Abortion. My, I have a whole chapter on the damage the pill is doing. I mean, the church is right because the church has our good interests at heart. When mm -hmm. you look at the the damage to you putting that chemical into your system, what it does to women. It's horrible, and it's cancer causing. I have a full chapter on that in my book, Recall Abortion. And I really, you know, any women who are listening right now, if you know someone, a Catholic woman who's taken the pill, you better give her the warning that it's bad for her. It's mm -hmm. bad for her health. The church is right. And it's not just about rejecting the church's teaching, about accepting that yes. what's right for you is what God wants for you. And that's why NFP is the answer, not Contraceptive. Exactly. And you can't reject what you don't know. So exactly. you have to first explore and you're going to see what a gift it is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of speaking for ourselves, our friend Annie Carto, who's a wonderful Catholic singer and songwriter, and she's a semi-regular guest on my show. She's a fantastic musician, very gifted. She wrote a song as a result of the HHS mandate, mandate right. uh, and it was uh, tying in with all the different religious freedom events when the mandate still the first time it came out and we had the first round of, of religious freedom events with the USCCB and then we had another one this past summer but the song that she that she wrote came out in 2012 and I featured it on my show and it's really a neat song with a very cool video attached to it and I think it really exemplifies what we're talking about here how women are speaking up for themselves let's take a, a listen and a watch to Andy's video let freedom sing Don't speak for me I'm a child 